Okay, team. We've spent a lot of time on fluency, and this is going to be our last question. And we started off with talking about how decoding helps with fluency. And when a student lacks fluency, we go back and look at the basic stuff like decoding and, and, and other things, right? Now we're going to talk about fluency and how it promotes comprehension. Because when a student is considered more fluent, they're able to spend um, more time, more cognitive energy on comprehension. Is that right? So that's what this question is leading us to is that student, the students that once they get that fluency, they're able to build up comprehension. And we know that like fluency is being developed in like first and second and third grade, right? This makes sense, it's being built. But as we get to third grade, we're gonna see more fluent students. And, and that's kind of where we start to transition more to comprehension. Does that make sense? Like first and second grade, maybe working on decoding and phonics to help with fluency. But second and definitely third grade, we're moving more towards using fluency to help with more comprehension. So we're moving on to our next section, right? All right, okay, so take a moment, take two minutes and read this to yourself on your own. Unpause. I'm going to read it with you. It's not, it's not a long one. It says here, a third grade a teacher observes that students, who, uh, let me circle third grade, so we're in this zone right here, uh, students who can read aloud fluently also demonstrate greater comprehension of expository text. So we have third grade students, right? And they're able to read aloud fluently. They're demonstrating more comprehension of expository text or informational text. The best explanation of, of that this is that fluent readers what? Is it uh, A, possess a self-awareness <laughs> that allows them to use metacognitive uh, skills efficiently? Look at all the vocab here. So metacognitive skills is when we think about our thinking and it helps us uh, like with interact with like visualization or text to self connections, it helps a reader as they read, interact with the text to build meaning. Now, it's this is more about um, comprehension and um, it's less about fluency. If we were talking about comprehension, then self metacognitive stuff would be really important. But we're talking about how does fluency help with comprehension. So we're not, we're not talking about how metacognitive skills help with comprehension, we're talking about fluency. So it's really not this, we're not doing a, a, a reading comprehension strategy question. And we're not really, I don't know, self-awareness. We're not doing, we're not being uh, becoming more aware of ourselves in that either. So let's cross that out. Okay, B, is it B? Uh, these students that are more fluent um, have already developed the basic um, background knowledge typically covered in a textbook. Not true, not yet. We don't know. This is saying they have that schema. Now we know that schema helps with comprehension, but that's fluency does not necessarily build schema, right? Fluency is its own thing. Schema building is building up background knowledge is something else. The student could be very fluent and lacks and lack background knowledge and have a real hard time with the text. So it's not really a background question either. And just because a student is fluent doesn't mean they have background knowledge. Um, how about C? Uh, have well-developed skills for decoding um, that may be true. That may be very well true. They do have well-developed skills for decoding any level of text word by word. Well, well let me think that again. Well-developed skills for decoding any level of text word by word. So we don't really want word by word. Okay. And, and it's true. They probably do have decoding skills. But I think the, the thing that's wrong about this one is the, the word by word. Okay, so there's something wrong with each one of these, probably multiple things, right? We're thinking about how uh, fluency helps with comprehension. Why does it help? Uh, because fluent readers are able to focus their full attention and cognitive resources on the meaning of the text. Isn't that what we kind of said? More fluent readers are able to, develop, uh, to focus all their brain energy on understanding the meaning of the text. That's basically what this one says here. Their full attention and cognitive resources. Like, we need all the brain energy we can get. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the answer is D.
Okay, so this just builds off this idea. More fluent readers are able to focus their brain energy on understanding a text. And, and this is going to be a big miles. This is, remember, this is that dividing line. Students that are more fluent are able to now focus on comprehension. And students that are less fluent, right, they got to go back and they got to attend to other things. That's where we started this section on fluency. Now we're talking about, you know, how fluent readers now can focus on that. Okay. All right, team, this is our last question in this set. Hopefully you've got something out of fluency. This is a really important section because this section on fluency is going to lead us into the first essay. Okay. So really important to understand what fluency is and, and understand breakdowns in fluency because it will help us with our first essay on these exams. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. We're actually going to do a, a, an in-between section next on word identification. But uh, let's take a look at this, and uh, this will lead us right into the essay, okay?